This is Wes with 7th Generation Design and a little bit of a hoarse voice. We've got Casey Pfeiffer behind the camera. And today we're, uh, we're looking at a spring water collection and pressurized distribution system. We've done a few different projects, uh, specifically on the spring water collection system. And we'll link to a few of those videos in the bio. Uh, but in this case, in this property here in Central California, that was already done. We don't even actually know what's happening underground up here, but we imagine we were told there's a spring box somewhere, but this pipe was just coming out of the side of the hill. Um, and in late August, there were three quarters of a gallon per minute of really beautiful, clean, cold spring water coming out. So we want to collect that water and then we wanted to distribute it to some larger holding tanks that serve the main residents in the property. Those holding tanks are 200 feet above us and a 500 foot long run up the hill. So in that case, we needed a pump that could get us, get, get this water 200 feet up. And, uh, and we want, needed to make sure though that the, uh, the, the pump shut off before it ran dry with whatever holding capacity. So we'll go and look at the holding tank system and, uh, and pumping system over here and walk you through those. Can you also share with us the impetus that brought on this project? Oh, yeah. Because this is a well, well developed property, an old property, but it kind of came out of the blue. Why are we here? Yeah. I'm going to sit back on this rock to tell the story. <laughs> um, oh, we're in California, and like many others, uh, the wells are running dry, and they're receiving quotes for drilling deeper with hopes that they'll hit water. And uh, in this case, because of the location, um, how rural it was, uh, that quote was somewhere around six figures. So, as I was being told this um, and enjoying a, a cold drink on a hot day, I was led over here and saw this water coming out of the hillside. So figured that this would be a, a good place to start. Um, they've got water late August, three quarters of a gallon a minute flowing right out. So Which is about? Right around a thousand gallons a day. thousand gallons a day. Yeah. So this is a single family residence here. Um, so for most single family residences, should be plenty with some mm -hmm. to spare for these beautiful redwoods down the down slope. So, all right, let's check out the pumping system. Okay, so this is the holding tank and pressurized distribution system, the pump and the pressure tank. Big thanks to Farm Supply on the Central Coast for helping just double check this design and, and sourcing these components for us. 300 gallon holding tank. Um, this is right around the inlet is right around six or seven feet below the spring water outlet there. This is configured with a three-quarter horsepower shallow well jet pump and um, this puts out two, uh, seven gallons per minute at the 200 feet of head that we need. That's then configured with this pressure tank and 200 feet of head is right around 86 PSI. So we've set this pressure tank right at around 86 PSI. And then we have this pressure switch and this activates the pump at uh, a cut in pressure of 90 PSI and shuts it off at a cutoff pressure of 110 PSI, so. And why does it shut it off? Why are we doing that instead of the more common option, right? Why is there a cutoff pressure for the pump? Yeah. Um, so these are common in, in houses um, and with wells that are going directly to a residence that has faucets and everything like that. In this case, we're going to some holding tanks. And if the holding tanks were closer, we might utilize uh, an electronic float switch. Uh, it's a mechanical float switch, but it, it basically closes the circuit and tells the pump to turn on or to turn off, depending on how the pump switch is configured. In this case, because the tanks were 500 feet away, we did not want to run conduit all the way back down here and wire. So what we utilized was a mechanical float valve. So when the tank fills up, the float valve closes and um, pressure begins to build in the system. So we have this shut off at 110 PSI um, to make sure that the pump, that the system doesn't become overpressurized. Now a consideration here is sometimes they may be using more water than we can be pumping or then the spring is putting out uh, during certain periods of high demand. So we wanted to make sure that this tank didn't run dry and, and then the pump 
run dry. So we have in here configured in series with between the power source and the uh, pressure switch, we have a float switch. This is a pump down float switch, which is normally open. So when this is hanging down, the water level is below the float switch, the circuit is open. And this is wired in between the power source and the float switch. So even if the float switch is, is calling for the pump to turn on, uh, this, will not, this will not allow it to turn on. This will override it basically. Say, hey, there's no water to pump. I'm not gonna wreck the well pump, or the, sorry, the, the pump that's at our feet. Yep. It's gonna keep the system off. Exactly, and then when this tank fills up, float switch floats until uh -huh. it closes. And, there we go. Uh, and then it, the pump stays on all the way down as the water level drops until it shuts off. So this is a pump down. It's meant to pump a tank down once it fills up, but then prevent the pump from running dry. Brilliant, simple, wonderful, appropriate technology. Yeah. And uh, that's pretty much it. We've got a, a nice outlet here for the local spring water drinkers who have been coming here for years and filling up from the spring and they'll get a little higher flow rate out of this. And we've got our overflow right here. That's that second line running down. We're turning back to the creek bed and then a small little watering pool right here at the bottom for wildlife to drink out of or humans. Yep. So that's not flowing right now because right. this is filling back up. We just ran, ran the pump down or ran the tank down. Uh, but this will continue to serve all of those trees that have been drinking from it for many, many years. And We'll have some beautiful spring water and they may not even have to turn on their well pump again much less get a new one dug so we'll see but wouldn't that be wonderful a day and, and it, we might get more than that during the winter cool all right we're going to take it up to the top show you guys the top and that'll be it we're up at the top tank now and actually the top three tanks they've got forty thousand gallons of yep. water storage up here um, but this is their main tank so we've got the fill from the spring on this they fill the backup tanks from this tank at the moment at least. So the springs, uh, the fill's coming up from the pump uh, and comes in through a bolt. And you can see, this is, these are all their level alarms. And this is for the well pump, uh, to turn the well pump on and off. This is a pump up switch. And here's the float valve um, at the end of the pumping run. So you can see we're, this tank's a few thousand gallons low right now, so it's in the open position, but we just drained the spring water holding tank down at the bottom. So even though this is open, so there's no, there's no pressure in the line, the pump down switch is in the off position as the spring water tank is filling back up. But if the spring water tank was full and the pump down switch was on, it was active, it was floating up, um, the, and this tank was full, this would be closed and the pressure switch would then turn the pump off to make sure we're not overfilling this tank or overpressurizing the lines. So it's a, it's a pretty simple, straightforward system. Seems to be working well. We just did a functional test on everything and yeah. Got 1,000 gallons a day of spring water now as part of their holding system. That's it on this. Check out this view.